This video shows how to get set up in IPST2110 on the Fabrix QXP Waveform Monitor or QXL Rasterizer. Firstly, open up your network settings and check that your IP addresses are set correctly. To do this, open up the Network and Automation and SFP IP Network Instruments. The SFP IP Network Instrument provides an overview of the status of the unit's SFP interfaces used for ST2110 IP packet reception or transmission, SFP28E and F. This window shows information about the IP link, IP address, and packets. It also allows you to configure the network addresses for the SFP interfaces. As you can see here, my IP addresses are being set dynamically. If you wish to set them to static, tap and hold or right-click in the instrument window to display a submenu. You can use this to set the IP address, either DHCP or static, and set the network, subnet mask and gateway of each SFP using a USB keyboard or on-screen keypad. We then need to move on to set up PTP. We have assumed that PTP has already been set up correctly on the media network. Go back to the instrument menu and select SFP E PTP Info and SFP F PTP Info Windows. The unit supports SMPT ST2059 Precision Time Protocol for the synchronization of media across an IP network. You can choose to receive either a single active PTP reference feed or dual PTP reference feeds into both SFPs, with one being the active system reference and the other a standby system reference. If using dual PTP feeds, you can display and set up SFP E slash F PTP info instrument for each SFP as shown here. The SFP E slash F PTP info instrument features include control of the PTP Grandmaster GM domain and communication mode, multicast mode or simply mixed mode, indication of PTP lock status, GM information including master ID and best master clock algorithm, BMCA, parameters, indication of estimated frequency and phase lock offset, and an indication of one-step or two-step sync traffic. To add your PTP domain, tap and hold or right-click in the instrument window to display the submenu. Select Configuration and change the domain number and any other settings required. You will then need to ensure your PTP engine is enabled in the same submenu. Once the PTP is connected, you should see all the relevant information displayed. In this demonstration, it's telling us that we are locked to a GPS Grandmaster, what the MAC address is, and the PTP time. The next step is to look at the transmit functions. I am just going to make my current windows smaller by double tapping on each. If we go back into the instrument menu and select IP Transmit. The IP Transmit instrument enables you to transmit two different types of output from the unit, either generator flows or monitor flows. Generator flows are the video test patterns from the video generator together with the audio tones from the audio generator. The monitor flows are the video and audio signals for the HDMI and SDI monitor outputs or audio being monitored by the analyzer audio meters instrument, that is, the screen display and any audio feed to the unit's monitor. For this demonstration, we are setting up generator flows. If we click Configure TX Flows, we'll see a configuration screen. The configuration screens are composed of a list of available flows displayed in an expandable list. Select a flow of interest and click the arrow to expand that item, displaying the configurable flow parameters.
Each minimized flow provides a single line summary of the current settings for information. In addition, at the right hand side of each flow is a drop down list allowing you to enable or disable that particular flow. You can enable or disable the flows as required using the toggle switch in the right hand column. You can then access the configuration settings by again pressing down on the instrument or right clicking. You'll see a variety of options here for configuration, including destination IP addresses. When entering a numeric value in the configuration settings, you can either use a USB keyboard connected to the unit or the on screen numeric keypad. We'll then do the same for audio and for ANC. And likewise, you will need to change the appropriate settings for multicast addresses. Then click Apply and OK. This alert is then warning us that we need to set our reference to be PTP rather than free run. To do that, we'll open up the Video Timing and System Reference instrument. You'll see here it's currently set to free run. Again, we'll open up the instrument menu and simply change the system reference to select where we are going to get the PTP from. In this case, SFPE. You can now see that we are locked to SFPE. The next stage of the setup is generation. We can set up our generator to output the video standards that we require. Please note, the generator toolset is an optional software license. Open up the generator instrument from the launch menu. The generator displays a status overview of the current standard being generated, the selected test pattern, and information about the reference signal. The Options menu of the generator provides access to further dialogues for configuring the video standard and test pattern generated, and to configure the audio signals generated. This displays a configuration dialog from which you can select the desired parameters for the standard from the following columns. Resolution, Frame Packing, Frame Rate, Gamut, OTF, Sampling, and Bit Depth. Selectable parameters are displayed in a bold white font, and those that do not apply are greyed out. You can then select an appropriate test pattern if required. Once we are up and running transmitting and generating ST2110, we can then analyze the flows. If we go back into the main instrument menu, we can select IP Receive Flows. The IP Receive Flows instrument enables you to instruct the unit to issue an IGMP request manually, categorize the SMPTE 2110 protocol type of each received flow, and then select the IP flows for analysis. On opening the IP Receive Flows instrument, a multicast requests table provides an overview of the current IP flows being received, together with their parameters. The IP flows include those that match multicasts to which the unit has subscribed and include multicast and unicast flows that have been sent to the unit. To configure, if we open up its menu and go into the multicast slash flow config tab, we can join the multicast flows using the multicast IP addresses previously assigned in the IP transmit instrument and assign which SFP we are receiving the flow on. Once done, press Join. We'll do this for the Dash 20 video, the Dash 30 audio, and Dash 40 ANC data streams. We've now got our three multicast join requests set up. We can now go into the Flow Selection tab. The Flow Selection tab displays all available flows being received on SFPE and or SFPF. 
SFP E flows are listed in the left hand pane and SFP F flows in the right hand pane. Use this tab to select different flows which you have joined. If the flow type has not already been set up, a pop up dialog will appear, allowing you to assign the expected flow type for the multicast join request. Simply tap or click a flow to select it, and the flow will become selected and highlighted. We can now see these flows are selected and shown in the IP Receive Instrument window. We can see that we are receiving packets, and the bandwidth is displaying relevant information about the flows. We can then use the analyzer functions within the unit to analyze the streams. Opening up the picture window to begin with. As you can see here, it currently says no input. This is because the IP receive flows is currently set to use SFPE as an interface with at the moment no flows assigned to it. If we bring up the IP receive flows window instrument menu, we can select the correct 2022-7 mode. In this case, we are going to use SFPF as that's where we previously assigned the flows to. I can now see the 211020 video flow within the picture window, and we can use any of the other analysis tools where required. Thanks for watching this video.